Notice, notice, notice. Dear viewers, the emergency manager has decided to hire his PR director's close friends to direct and record Flint City Council meetings for $100 per meeting. I was paid less than $4 a meeting or $1 per hour over the last three years. The newly hired company has no intention of providing public access with the footage they now record for the emergency manager with your tax dollars. They have said that they will post the meetings to the city's website. Only 30% of Flint's connected. The good news is that the Flint City Council has stepped up and determined that theses broadcasts are important enough to, as they say, put their money where their mouth are. Each council person has and will contribute to the broadcasting of these meetings on public access. I commend them for seeing the value of the programming I have provided for years. Notice, notice, notice. Spectacle Productions aka, Paul Herring is no long in charge of recording the city COUNCL meetings we are currently only provided a feed from the master control room and therefore have no control over audio or video. If you like to express your opinion regarding this you can call me at 810-239-2901 or the emergency manager via the mayor's office 810-767-7346 option 6. If you would like to see these meetings continue on Fact 17 and ATT's Uverse consider a monthly contribution of $5. Online spectacleproductions.com or by phone 810-239-2901 Thanks for watching and remember The best way to keep a politician honest is watch them Paul H. Herring Sr. Or people within a thousand feet legally from each other, you see what I'm saying? Is, am I seeing that, is that an accurate kind of conflict between the two? With the thousand feet and then saying 15 people can be within we'll one building? We'll answer that question when you're through speaking, okay? Uh, pardon me? We'll, we'll answer that, I'll have the attorney answer that question at the end. Did you understand what I was questioning? I'm not sure if I understand. Dispensary needs to be within uh, or not within so many thousands of feet of each other. One thousand. One thousand feet. Then on the other ordinance, it states that within a provisioning center that you can have up to 15 caregivers. Each caregiver is their own dispensary. Each caregiver grows their own weed and dispenses it to their own patients and they come to the provisioning centers and network with each other and with patients. Okay. For, you know, I have several people that come and go as separate entities, with, then they come and work and then leave. It, they don't like, you know, it's not like I come, they come and I buy stuff and it's a retail establishment and then I resell it. It's each individual caregiver is responsible for managing their own crop and all of that. And then you answered that, yes, I was correct in assuming that each caregiver who's growing and their grow facilities have to be licensed as licensed dispensaries. If that's accurate, then more than four licensed caregivers cannot be in my building at once, according okay. to your one law, but it's okay according to the other. Your, your five minutes are up, and okay. we'll answer your question, Thank okay? You. Thank you very much for coming. Excuse me. Is there anyone else that would like to address the city council on this public hearing? Hello. I am Nayara Sharif, and I stand before you. I don't mind outing myself, but I am a proud medical marijuana patient. And this has actually helped me not file for disability because of the neurological issues that I have. And this ordinance on its face, I feel like needs to go back to the drawing board. Currently, I have a private caregiver 
And if you look at like provisioning center where it says any building structure a lot where more than 25% is used to cultivate marijuana. If you have a house that's about 800-ish square feet, which is a lot of houses in the city of Flint, if you have more than 206 you know, square feet that's used, or it could possibly be a room or a couple of rooms, um, I feel like this does not provide purity um, to the other, the other licensed um, drug dispensaries, and I'm saying that explicitly because pharmacies are licensed drug dispensaries. And um, when you look at other classes of drugs like opiates or oxycotton or codeine, they don't have to go through these hoops. Pharmacies don't have to necessarily comply to all of these things that's in this ordinance. Maybe they do. Maybe you need to um, have the same sort of things in this ordinance that applies to pharmacies or hospitals or other um, licensed drug distribution centers. Um, and especially like looking at the history of marijuana, I mean, there, like if you actually look at the history, there's a lot of like racial overtones of why um, marijuana actually became illegal, and I encourage you to all like look at that history if you want to. But um, I think that there, there does need to be regulation. I think that everyone's probably in agreement that there needs to be regulation, the same as there are pharmacies and other stuff. Even though I know of people who have abused, um, I mean, there's a lot of people who abuse prescription drugs. And there has not really, especially by the city of Flint police, there hasn't been, um, I personally know a couple of people who are continuously being employed even though they are abusing prescription drugs and having illegal prescriptions and they're constantly being hired by other entities even though the previous employers have reported that to the city of Flint police and DA, DEA and all this stuff. But I'm not sure if the regulation, if this is the best regulation. I, I admit that there needs to be something out there. Um, I do not agree with this particular thing because I feel like there is not parity with other legally legal drug dispensaries and stuff. Um, so yeah, that's about it for me. <laughs> um, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Hello, I'm Ariel Mitchell. I live in the city of Flint, 759 East Linden Street. Uh, just like the first, last speaker, Joanna, was speaking about, I got a, a significant other. She owned medical pills, and she lived in one of them apartments, about six, about seven families in there. And stuff be coming up to the vent. And I'm, a, hey, I don't, I'm talking about this, but I don't even take the marijuana, but I, whatever the government says, and no, you're going to pass it if you pass this law up. But I don't agree with it, but... As I study this stuff, it's just like when Madam O'Hara took prayer out of school in 63. This drug, drug this uh, prayer stuff is like different religions. The only, the one going to win is the, the real religious. But they don't want you to, like you're messing up the, the one who sell the marijuana around, around that stuff. But they don't want, there's presidents in this city and presidents in their dope stuff. And I heard chemical imbalance, but it's, that stuff get up to the vent. She, it'll mess her up, and she'd be taking stuff out on me. But, but she liked to live in apartments. But I can't. Even, hey, I let them speak for themselves. But I, as a citizen of Flint, people's like in the Seven War, like Mr. Dumas said, his mother don't like, but he said, but whatever. But that's for what you decide what goes on in your ward when you come to vote for this Madison generation. Uh, vile chemicals, unbalanced, they do experiments with the slow-mo stuff, 
and, and Scotty, you, no, the lawyer, no, I just, that's what I want to Thank you, R.L. Is there anyone else who would like to address State Council on this public hearing? Good evening. Thank you for this opportunity. My name is Matthew Abel. I am a lawyer with the law firm of Cannabis Council PLC in Detroit. It's a four attorney firm and all we do is marijuana law. I've been a marijuana lawyer for 10 years. I've read this statute and uh, I support your movement toward implementing it. I just have some comments and concerns. Um, the definition of a provisioning center as it's written includes any building, structure or lot where more than 25 percent, I'm assuming of the floor space, is used to cultivate marijuana. The um, provisioning center bill that is pending in Lansing indicates, it says, that no provisioning center will be allowed to cultivate marijuana or will be able to have plants on the premises. And so this definition is at odds with that definition. And it seems to me that if the city is attempting to license not only the retail businesses, the dispensaries or, or provisioning centers, but also to license the growing facilities, the gardens, that there is a way to do that, but it should be done through way of a separate ordinance. The city of Ypsilanti, for example, has an ordinance that licenses dispensaries. I believe there are seven licensed there. And they also have an ordinance that licenses grow operations. They have three large licensed um, medical marijuana gardens. And to say that any building where more than 25% of the floor space is used, um, so if someone has a small house and their garden is in the basement, and that's more than 25% of the floor space, that automatically makes them a provisioning center. And because you can't have a provisioning center in a, in a residential neighborhood, it makes it illegal. And so um, I think that should be changed and it would be helpful to the city, I believe, to say, well, if one or two caregivers want to grow in a house where the people are related, that's not a cultivation center or a provisioning center. But if caregivers want to get together in a, what I would assume would be an industrial building, um, that those facilities should be licensed. And I think the city can properly do that. Um, the other part of that definition where three or more caregivers are cultivating, first of all, again, provisioning centers may not cultivate. Um, but if three or more are transferring, that makes them a provisioning center. But again, the provisioning center bill specifically says that the relationship that a caregiver has with their own licensed patients is not a provisioning center. But what you are doing, you're saying if three of these people transfer to patients to whom they're licensed, that makes them a provisioning center. Again, I think that is at odds with the pending state law, and I would suggest amending or changing that language to say, accept caregivers delivering to their own licensed patients. Um, if you like, so I perhaps won't have to come up here on the next one. Regarding the 1,000 foot distance, 1,000 feet from a school is in federal law. 1,000 feet from a school is in the provisioning center bill. I don't think that's going to change. However, I don't see any need to say that it can't be within 1,000 feet from a park or a church. And um, it will be, well, the parks are fairly easy to determine. The churches may not be so much because we would have to go to the city treasurer, find out all of the properties that have a um, ecumenical exemption or religious exemption from property taxes and plot them. So um, I think this ordinance still needs some work. I support it very much. I'd be happy to work with anyone if you'd like my input. But um, those are the immediate problems that I see. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> Our next speaker. I wasn't going to talk about this, but as these guys were all speaking, I noticed a few things. The $5,000 fee, and then there's a $500 fee here. What? Could you give us your name for the record? That's Mr. Robert Johnson. Johnson. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I just I need Robert you to Johnson. Give it. I just I like it. that. Could you give me your name, Mr. Johnson? Robert Johnson. Thank you. Just for the record. I know. Thank you. Anyway, you got down here a $500 fee, and then you got a $5,000 fee. So in the city of Flint. What I see you doing is you're making 
it so that you have more illegal people growing stuff because they can't afford to pay these fees. That means these people that want to be legal, you're making them illegal, pretty much like the water in the city. You take and you charge so much for the water, then people you know, get it cut off and then they can't afford to keep it on so they turn it on themselves. And then you make them criminals. In this case, you're doing the same thing with the medical marijuana, and which is legal in this state, and they have the right to do this, and yet you're putting a $500 fee on these people, then you're putting a $5,000 fee on these people, and like these guys are saying, it gets rid of their competition, only they use the word riffraff. Right. That was their words, not mine. They're getting rid of their competition, so they use riffraff. $5,000 is ridiculous for fees. The city of Flint has a problem with overcharging fees. Today I was here checking out fees. I mean, you guys got a fee for friggin' batteries to sell ba batteries, car batteries, $300 a year for someone to sell batteries, car batteries. And they won't get the license because they say, well, we don't sell that many batteries, so why should we pay 300 You guys feed that crap out of everything. This is ridiculous, and I would vote no. I, w I would take it back and, and redo it. I mean, that fee is outlandish. You're going to have people breaking the law. I do like the part where the, the chief gets to inspect things. I mean, I'm all for the police checking things out, and that's cool. But when I, when I heard the riffraff, all that, all that remind me of is, is the riffraff that can't pay their water bills. And, and that, that reminded me of the riffraff that can't pay these fees. And then you will have them in jail over there across the street because they can't afford to pay their fees. And yet that's how they make their money. And you know who they're going to be? Citizens of Flint. But they won't be the rich ones that can afford these fees. They'll be the poor ones trying to dig themselves out of the hole. Thank you. <clears throat> My name is Jordan Cummings. I just have one more moment I need to take of your time. Um, well, I admire the admiration and the tenacity of Michigan Organics and uh, Michigan Safe Transfer. They used to be the riffraff when the Genesee County Compassion Club hey, first started. Did, you've already addressed the city council, did you not? Yes, I did. You can only address us one time. Thank you. Roger that. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Chairman, if I may, it'll be another ordinance similar right, to this one, and he could maybe come back on the similar ordinance. Thanks. There's another ordinance coming up similar, yes, and right. you'll, you'll be able to. Thank you. And I was going to mention that. Thank you, Councilman Mays. But I just didn't want him to speak twice on this. I program. understand, yeah. Okay. Is there anyone else that would like to address the city council on this public hearing? Is there anyone else that would like to address the city council on this public hearing? Is there anyone else that would like to address the city council on this public hearing? This public hearing is closed. <clears throat> Our next public hearing is the amendment, amended ordinance chapter 50. Uh, as amended ordinance to change the code of the city of Flint by amending chapter 50 zoning article special regulated use section 5161 5163 5164 5165 and 5169 ordinance to amend the change to change dispensary to provisioning center is there anyone that would like to address the city council on this ordinance uh, pertaining to provisioning centers and the change. Thank you. I need your name again for the record. Jordan Cummings. Thank you. Like I was beginning to say uh, just a moment ago, I was on the legal board of the Genesee County Compassion Club, which is located just outside of Flint, the first one of its kind in this county period. Uh, back then, I, I recognized both these gentlemen. They, they were the riffraff that they're talking now. And all I think that's doing is, like I could say about the consumers guy, is it's giving people no options. You know, we, we pass this tonight the way it is. We grandfather these people in. Their competition is gone. So it's, it, you know, the whole thing our country's built on is flushed down the toilet. 
because we're going to stop these people with a, with a terrible proposal and allow these people, just because they've already made thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on, on already having this here, of course they don't want anyone else to come in. So that they have to, they don't want to upgrade their standards. They don't want to raise their, their level of, you know, uh, operating procedures. They just want to do it the easiest way possible, and that's the last thing this city needs. This city needs competition. The city needs everyone trying to get everyone's business so that everyone from Detroit, Lansing, wherever you might come from, Davis and Lapeer, all will come and consolidate in Flint like they already do. The most highly congested area in this whole entire state of medical marijuana cards is right here in this city. To do this, to, to pass this proposal and allow people have already, that the riffraff, as I call them, to continue to make more money with, with smoke and mirrors as they've done the past few years is absurd. That's all I have to say. Thank you. <clears throat> is, there any, <clears throat> is there anyone else that would like to address this ordinance? Thank you. My name is Chris Delmaroni and I live in Flint, Michigan. Um, I, I think there's some yeah, maybe information that needs to be provided from council to the public as to what is the reason for this name change. Because at the end of the day, an apple is an apple and an orange is an orange. Call it what you may. But it's, you know, this is a place that's simply dispensing what are now legal drugs. Um, you know, at one time, liquor was uh, against the law. Guess what they did to that? They made it legal again. And yeah, there's ordinances, there's inspections, and those that are guilty, they're doing something wrong, that are guilty, they lose their license. It's the way this should be. I mean, a pharmacy is a pharmacy. Uh, we talk about a thousand feet. Um, I think for liquor licenses, it's only 500 feet. So I, you know, what's? No, it's a thousand. Is it a thousand? Okay, thank you, Scott. Um, there's over the years here at council. There's always been a question about city parks and parkways. <clears throat> And, and I think the ordinance needs to make it perfectly clear, I guess in, in my eyes anyways, that a park is a park, and the parkway, the area between the curb and the sidewalk, is something different. Because what will happen if people are reading park as parkway, you know, the only ones that'll be here are the, I think there's four dispensaries right now, and um, you know, that, that restricts competition. It's easy for those who already have a dispenser to say, pass this as quickly as you can, pass it tonight, enforce it, let's do it, because see, it doesn't necessarily apply to them. If they're already within a thousand feet of each other, they get to stay. No one's making them close, no one's making them move. I just feel that as a citizen of Flint, um, you know, I, I don't have any intentions of opening up medical marijuana dispensary, but as a citizen of Flint, as council members are to vote on this, it would be good to have a map of the area to show exactly where these dispensaries could be located so that the public has a better understanding of what uh, this regulation will eventually look like in the community. Uh, you know, I, I, in regards to the other ordinance I had talked about, uh, a thousand feet from a school, and what if the school is closed or not? What if the school is across the street outside the city limits, but within a thousand feet of where the dispensary wants to go in Flint? You know, can a dispensary in Flint be within a thousand feet of a dispensary in another community across the street? Just like the school just like a church. Uh, I, I just think those are questions that need to be asked and answered and to do anything less would not be fair to the residents or, 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 or fair to the ordinance. Uh, I'm concerned about uh, the HIPAA law and if it applies to on page one here that previous ordinance where someone has to provide their full legal name and date of birth 
of the primary caregiver. I think some of that stuff, you know, people may not want that to be made public. Uh, not that, that they're necessarily hiding something. Um, so I, I, I think, you know, I think council can easily answer tonight, you know, what is the, the, the reason for the name change here from uh, dispensary to uh, provisioning center? Is that something in state law that's required or, or what? Uh, think about limiting competition and, uh, you know, alcohol was once illegal. Thank you. Thank you. Chris, Chris I can uh, answer your uh, last question, and I will. You can take your seat. Um, the change is to be consistent with state law. Thank you. Dion Freeman, Dash Bay. Um, looking at what you have listed here, you're not only talking about medical marijuana, but the dis provisioning center, is it just being added to the sheet? Because what I'm seeing is something is a group A, group B, group C, group D, which gets into telecommunications, which I have no clue about. That's the FCC's responsibility. Um, adult bookstores, massage establishments, lick stores, pawn shops, all of this. And so provisioning center, I wonder if you are trying to make all of these establishments to fall up under provisioning center, if that's just something handwritten on the top of 14501. Um, I have been to massage school. I was trained under the Flint School of Therapeutic Massage. And whatever is going on in every side, in, inside of every massage place and every establishment that's going on in Flint, um, one place or every place can't be responsible for. The term already has been used, uh, I was thinking scallywags, but that's not what's been said. Um, whatever the term was that used to denigrate the people that are inside of some of these businesses that are legit businesses. It's not, um, probably not legal to lump them all together like that. And um, I don't know how a telecommunications storage facility and all that can have something to do with billiards and game tables and pawn shops and tattoos and massage. How does this all get, I don't know if it's all being listed under provision center, if that's just something handwritten on the top of here for the Miracle Marijuana ordinance questions. Um, I don't know if you can give clarification on that since we're getting clarification from uh, Attorney Babe. And also, I keep hearing a term being used. This is what kind of meeting? Is this a city of Flint meeting or a state meeting? Because I'm confused. I hear that from you, Mr. Kincaid. You're saying this state meeting, this Flint meeting or city meeting, is it a state meeting or is it a city meeting? I'm confused on that part. I don't know if you're just kind of slipping those words interchangeably. Because um, if it's a state meeting, then I would think the governor would want to be here since he's putting all these regulations in upon us and uh, the emergency manager at least will want to be here since he is the appointed person here for the city of Flint. So if Mr. Bay can't give us clarification on behalf of the city or you as our city council person, the elected city council person for the city of Flint, then the people from the state can also be here to answer some of these questions. Oops, that's my phone, I apologize. Thank you. And also I wanted to know, um, are we still taking these slips for tonight? Okay. All right, thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to address the city council on this public hearing? Hello, I'm Nair Sharif. Um, I am against the adoption of this particular ordinance. Um, one, because, I mean, I get like the whole uh, making uh, the dispensary thing in compliance with provisioning centers, which is in alignment with state law, but um, the whole thing with the whole grandfather in of group E, which is the medical marijuana dispensaries. Um,
just because there are plenty of caregivers who have this operating out of their homes. It is their home-based business. Now, I have a home-based business. Not a, not a, I'm not a caregiver. <laughs> um, I have a bakery. <laughs> but um, I just want to know, like, I'm just trying to think through, like, if this is adopted, how will those caregivers be notified? Because I know, like, they have to you know, fill out an application, you know, like through state law, and they, you know, go through all that stuff where they are licensed caregivers. Um, there may be plenty of caregivers that may be within a thousand feet from each other. I'm not quite sure with that whole thing, but I just think like the actual implementation of this is going to be kind of a hairy beast. Um, and these are people who, that is their home-based business. I mean, many of the caregivers they do not want to out themselves that they are caregivers because they are afraid of retaliation and all of this stuff. Like my caregiver does not really want people to know that they are a caregiver because they're afraid that someone's going to come and try to rob them. Um, they're afraid that the neighbors are going to like go up in arms with pitchforks against them because they are a caregiver. And um, it is something not only that they believe in, but something that they use as their home-based business and they pay taxes on that and all of that stuff so I guess like I'm just mainly afraid with the actual implementation the feasibility of the implementation of this thing and um, I think that the multitude of caregivers that live in the city of Flint they aren't they don't have any sort of consideration with this because these are only the provisioning centers are only the people who are in um, commercial spaces that have storefronts and not the home-based businesses. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to address the city council on this public hearing? Uh, yes, sir. My name is Ira Mitchell. I live at 759 East Linden Street. And uh, about these caregivers. I ran in with a problem with these caregivers around this city already established. And they, they go on to establish under the, by growing these farms, these fruits and stuff. Them the, them the real caregivers about these vegetables, I noticed. I didn't, but they only ain't doing vegetables. They got these houses with these peoples in it. And, and, and so happened that my significant other be living in it. And I go to, and I go to, uh, to pick up one of my significant others, these caregivers think they own own these people, they be giving them the spices that the marijuana to, but the same stuff. That's why I figured I wanted to see these, they gonna outlaw the, them vegetables they act like they're giving to certain people who they self itself and put it and substitute with marijuana. Like nobody don't know that stuff. Like, like I say, if nobody won't do nothing about it now, like gonna be like Madame O'Hara. Nobody, they wanna fight after they pass the law. A woman take prayer out of school and then got kids scared to pledge allegiance in elementary school and put them three-year-old computers. And that's what I'm going to say. Now take that. Sir. Thank you, R.L. Uh, just finally, I just want Ben Horner, um, uh, once again, I just wanted to thank everyone for working hard on this issue. It's a very confusing issue. I get calls every day from people around the state asking how the medical marijuana program works. I know that everyone here has spent a lot of time uh, trying to understand those rules. Every week and every month that we wait on passing uh, this ordinance or, you know, operate with no moratorium, uh, you know, gives people the impression that they can uh, do uh, and make their own interpretations on medical marijuana. Uh, this ordinance isn't going to push people out of the program. It's actually going to make them safer. It's going to make the city of Sint the city of Flint safer, and it's going to give uh, law enforcement the tools that they need to be able to uh, to navigate and enforce uh, the rules that are in place right now, with no rules, with no ordinance, with no moratorium. 
it's you know uh, 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 an environment for you know uh, problems to be created that need to be resolved later. Uh, I once again in encourage you to pass these bills. Uh, they, we can always make them better in the future. And the marijuana laws are going to change many times in the decades ahead. Uh, just like alcohol was illegal, um, you know, marijuana is slowly decriminalizing. The question is, is how do we handle that shift in the most responsible way? I think this ordinance is very responsible. You guys did a really good job putting that together, and I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to address the city council on this public hearing? Mr. President, wow, he's coming. I've heard that speaker say that a couple of times. It is a moratorium in the city of Flint. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, sir. My name's Joe King, and I reside in Flint. I don't have my glasses, but I'm trying to get as much information I can out of this. Number one, I keep hearing people comparing the marijuana dispenser with pharmacy. One thing, I don't know of any farmers that cultivate or manufacture their drugs inside the building. I, I don't think that would have anything to do with medical marijuana. And two, as I read this and look at the requirements, uh, I have to think at the citizens of Flint. When I look at this, and the past laws have just about eliminated most of the minority of blacks for me were qualified for this. Most of them have already had a felony for having just a little bit of marijuana. So, so they, uh, this ordinance is something that they need to look at. Scissor Flint, the only one that's going to be able to have marijuana places are outside the city limit. Uh, that should be a requirement if you don't live in the city because they're going to make the money off the citizen that cannot qualify to have one of these dispensaries. A lot of people are going to make a lot of money off our younger adults, our young kids, and we need to look at a ways of, of making this a lot better law. I don't know whether we can, since it's a state law that has been passed. I don't know whether the city are able to make any changes on how you qualify for this. But I don't see too many residents in the city of Flint even being able to open dispensary. They spend a lot of money, but they won't make any. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Robert Johnson. Again, going on what I've heard. I don't use marijuana, never have, never will, unless of course I get cancer and I'll try it. I'm not going to say I won't, but I don't use it. However, in saying that, I keep hearing that it's needed because um, these regulations are needed because of the, the fact that uh, it's unregulated and people do what they want and blah, 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 blah. You take and you take and put these regulations as they are in force right now, you have not had any, to my knowledge, problems with the dispensaries and the, the stuff going on right now. You haven't had any problems, to my knowledge, of any of the growing places that grow their own and, and dispense it. You start putting in these fees and you start putting in, and this one confuses the heck out of me because you got dispensaries and like she was saying, I mean, it's telecommunications, towers, blah, blah. I mean, why is that all in there? However, um, I haven't had a chance to really read it, but um, the fact is, is you start taking and you start putting these regulations on a, these places that are already growing and everybody's been peaceful and doing it carefully has become illegal. We haven't had the crime, we haven't had the issues, to my knowledge, over, I, I've never heard the police say, well, he was shot because he was robbing a dispensary. I haven't heard, well, he was shot because he was robbing a growing 
facility. You know, we keep hearing about the, the murders in Flint. I haven't heard none of that. You start putting these regulations where they have to be underground and hiding and being illegal, then you're going to end up with more crime. I don't care. That's the way I feel. I've been here long enough. I have seen your crime, as you know. That's one of the things I'm the best at here in Flint. I don't see this as passing as it is. I, I was trying to skim through it the best I could. There's a lot of good things in there. However, there are some things that just don't get it. Um, one of the things is the fees, in which I've already said. And then, like I said, this one here, I mean, it goes on to telecommunications. I don't know if this is just categories and you're hitting on a bunch of different businesses at once, but, but I would encourage you not to pass none of this. Go back and say, hey, can we fix this better? Work with the gentleman from Detroit and see if you can fix you know, it better where it's going to stand up to the Constitution, you know, as far as the police um, coming into the buildings, because I think the police should be able to come in and inspect whenever they need to. However, I think there should be a procedure in which they should do it, not just walk in and say we're coming in. Um, that way they're protected and they can, you know, do it the way they should. Like I said, I wasn't here to speak on, on marijuana issues because I don't use the stuff. I never liked it, never was a proponent of it. Um, but it's coming. It's, I see it in the future as being as open as, or as alcohol. And we all know that alcohol kills more people in this nation than marijuana ever, ever would think of. So if you want to be hard and, and put these, make a lot of people illegal and start the crime up worse than what it is, go ahead and pass it. To me, I think, I think you should go back and fix where, where the fees are and you're not making so many people illegal. Thank you. <clears throat> is there anyone else that would like to address the city council on this public hearing? Is there anyone else that would like to address the city council on this public hearing? Is there anyone else that would like to address the City Council on this public hearing? This public hearing is closed. <clears throat> Our last public hearing this evening is an ordinance to amend Chapter 19, Section 19-1 of the International Fire Code. An ordinance to amend Chapter 19 of the Code of the City of Flint by amending Section 19-1 to adopt the International Fire Code as published by the International Code of Council. Is there anyone that would like to address the City Council on this public hearing? Is there anyone that would like to address the City Council on this public hearing? <laughs> My apologies. I'm trying to figure out exactly which one it is. I mean, I heard you say about what number that's written on the top of you. You have five minutes to address the city council, ma'am. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Dion Freeman, first ward, city of Flint resident. Um, of course, we want to be with international standards when it comes to our fire safety in the city. Now, I don't know what type of stipulations are inside this ordinance that you want to get approved, but we want to definitely keep our city safe from fire hazards, fire protection, our police and our fire. So if there's some type of international standard that's going to help us to be better in protecting our citizens, now I can't say what's in the fine detail of what's being presented, yet, you know, I would definitely be in support of helping to make our city safer. You know, it's good to spend money on public safety and not some of these other frivolous things that we spend money on. I mean, yeah, we want our cities, our city to be lit up, but <clears throat> When the town hall manager, uh, town hall meetings of Mike Brown was here and they started putting all these expensive things in here that we didn't need, we're still paying the cost of it now. And there's been something that's been said, let's fix it now, let's just do it now. Is that a sign or something? Uh, no, I was just... I'm just listening to you. Oh. Uh, um, <clears throat> I wanted to know if we are going to stay inside a mentality of just pass it and do it quick and to fix the problem later. 
because that's what's got us into the problem that we're in financially and the decisions that's been being made for the city, period, through the emergency manager and through the city council, a former and hopefully not present. The gentleman that came up that's in support of um, the dispensaries and him, Michigan Organics and stuff like that. Okay, are we going to get out of, let's just do it now and hurry up and rush through and fix the problem later, which all it does is cause more problems for us later. The $19 million that was spent or should have been taken care of a long time ago when the City of, Skin, uh, Flint, City of Flint Head Start program, when our program was suffering, the teachers and the school, and we were put off by money being held by our current governor, it's a, let's just say it's okay for now and then two years later have another program, another problem or a bigger problem, just like the budget that was presented to us for this next fiscal year and next two fiscal years. Okay, let's just go ahead and pass it and say it's okay now when it's already been made known that in two more years there's going to be a bigger problem. So, according to these ordinances, you know, I thank the city council people that are here for putting in the diligence to make these things be better for us. Those that really want us to come together and be better, not just continue to fight and bicker and all this kind of stuff. Things that really is going to make us better at the bottom line. So, I just want to say I hope that in this state hearing through the city of Flint, however it's being presented, I hope that we won't keep that same mentality of, let's just go on to pass it now and fix the problem later so the generations every year, two years later, and the council people, two years later, and everybody else that's still here in the city want to be here in the city, two years later keep having an expanded problem. So thank you for listening. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to address the council on this public hearing? Is there anyone that would like to address the city council on this public hearing? Is there anyone that would like to address the city council on this public hearing? <coughs> public hearing is closed. So, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Mays, I'm going to start with you um, and allow council members to respond to all of the uh, public hearings. In, uh, um, I'll try to keep track of the questions, and if council members don't an answer them, I'll, I'll try to um, answer them. So um, this is your time. Yeah, that was my question, Mr. Chairman. I didn't know what part of the agenda we was doing it, so if we're going to do it now, I'm so looking I'm at the- I'm going to allow, because there were a number of questions, I'm going normally, you know, we wait till the end, but not because of the public hearing, there's some people that are here that want to leave and they want to hear their questions answered. So I'm going to ask each council member to, to briefly walk through these ordinances and, and try to answer these questions, and then we'll have our time at the end of the night. So. Okay, I'll try to make it fast, Mr. Chairman, and to the public and to my colleagues in no certain order. The first two public hearings dealt with fireworks and those ordinances, and I'm going to support that, and I'm going to kind of pass by that. And then the payphone ordinance, um, clearly, if somebody want to regulate payphones, if payphones pop back up, we'll deal with that then. But I'm going to support getting rid of the ordinance dealing with payphones. Um, and that doesn't mean you can't have some. It means that we just ain't going to regulate them right now. AT&T, whoever want to set them up can, so I'm going to support that. But a lot of the interest and activity was on the two medical marijuana ordinances. The International Fire Code, we, um, I'm gonna support that as well. It's an update that needed to be updated, and so I'm gonna support that as well. We have what's called a legislative committee, and most of the discussion and work on ordinances is done in our legislative committee, and I would prompt any and everybody to understand that the committee work that's done mainly in that back room is the meetings that people should attend. And they should attend them and get input in committee, and particularly, um, I think you say your name was Abel, um, Attorney Abel, um, you're able to really give us input in a timely manner. By the time we get out here, people are making decisions. And so we were in committee meeting today. And to the two um, gentlemen that I met, um, I understand your compassion. And I think um, 
you both will be grandfather clause then, and we talked outside in the front door. But I'm going to ask my colleagues who didn't attend the committee meeting, which is legislative, legislative one that I'm fortunate to be on, that I'm a pretty sharp guy, I like to say, if nobody else said. And I really like to read law. And when I read law and understand law, then and only then do I make my decisions. Now, of course, you said something about four years that you know, this thing has been going on for four years. And I want to correct you, it is a moratorium in the city of Flint. Nobody can just set these things up. But you're right as far as giving the um, city the tools to monitor and, you know, police stuff. So my position is this. When I heard Attorney Abel, and I'm going to say that for a shortness of name, you said something interesting to me when you talked about separating two different ordinances, the cultivation aspect and the dispensary aspect. Um, and I've got some questions about that. And I really want to see how those legal questions on that separation pan out. And I'm not interested in doing that out on the floor. I had said early in committee meeting as a member of the legislative committee, I asked the questions. I say, if we send this back, because I had questions about the details of who will be grandfathered in, and now I hear of an residential people saying when Naira spoke, about grandfather clause then, and I think we've been concentrating on commercial people only being grandfather clause then. And so I've heard from the public, and I see the argument on both sides. I, I really now, as a person who prides myself in knowing what I'm going to vote for as a committee member, and knowing that I attend committee meetings, knowing that I try to get a good understanding, I don't know if I'm ready for that vote yet. But I'm almost there. And so I like to do that in committee. And I'm going to put a motion on the floor when Thank you say you. You. Um, that this go back to committee and that in committee, we go over some things I've heard here about the separation and if, if, if our city attorney believed that because sometimes we always look for second opinions but Mr. Bade, I'm going to really be interested to see what you say at the proper time as it relates to that and um, even though there might be some more tweaking I raised the issue of $5,000 but I visited a couple medical marijuana dispensary type locations and the people in business seem not to care about that 5,000 because I guess it's lucrative. But I'm hearing some concern here. And remember, I'm always an advocate for the least of them. If you got home businesses that might not could uh, afford- Councilman Mays, could you, could you please sum up? I mean, yeah, I know it was coming. I want to get their questions answered. I in, in you want to get job. their questions answered? No, I'm, I'm just asking you to Or you want to get my questions answered? No, I'm, I'm just asking you to No, I'm up. serious. I'm, I'm no, trying. There were some questions that were posed, and I want council members to have the opportunity to speak, which normally we don't have. But who going to answer their questions, us or Peter Bay? I'm going to ask Pete to answer the technical Well, then questions. I would like to have heard him answer those questions Very prior to, because it could have saved me some time. <laughs> And I'm here to tell you, that's why I say all of that type stuff should be done in committee, because if we're going to get into the questions answered back and forth, I would rather invite them to committee. When you had certain people come up, like one lady, I was polite then, Mr. Kincaid, you was able to answer her questions back and forth. But I just sit there and didn't answer questions back and forth, 
So really what you're saying is as a committee member, you want me to sum up because I know who been in them committee meetings. And when I listen to all of the comments, I'm going to be curious, but Mr. Kincaid, the reason that I'm going to acquiesce and be quiet now, because it's going to come a time where we got to convince people, me in particular, to try to do something to get this right versus just being heard speaking. This is one that I want to get right. And I'm not really um, trying to frustrate you. I'm not mm -hmm. trying to belabor nothing. But as a committee member who done followed this thing, I was really trying to deal with it. So right. I'll be quiet because that's what you want me to do, and we'll wait for the action. Well, Eric, th thank you. But typically, you know, we wait to the end for council members to respond. But this is an important issue. There were some important questions raised. I thought this would be a, an opportune time for council members to take a couple minutes to respond to the public. And you've done that, and I appreciate that. I just didn't, I, I want to get through this so we can move on. There are people that are waiting for us to get to the point of action. That's why I was going to make the motion, and then in discussion, we could have discussed yeah. those questions. Yeah, but yeah. however you got it structured, I would have liked to have heard some of the answers from Mr. Bade on the questions. Thank I could you. have maybe addressed the specific questions, but if you wanted to hear what I had to say, consider it done, and I'll wait Thank to you. see what happens. Thank you. Councilwoman Poplar, do you have anything? Thank you, Mr. President. I just want to um, get the questions answered for the people that are interested in this. I've been going around since it hit the floors a number of years ago, and it hasn't been um, one of my favorites uh, to vote on it, period. And um, it's my opinion that um, you can tweak it, turn it over, flip it over, bring it back next year and the year after next, and you're still gonna have some disgruntled people about a marijuana ordinance. It's just as simple as that. Nobody's ever gonna be happy with this ordinance, whichever way you do it, but for the ones that feel that they need a uh, question answered, they answer the questions and um, vote on it and let's move it on. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Nolan. Um, my sentiments are the same. We've been dealing with this for about three years now. Um, and every time it comes to the floor, we send it back and we tweak it. We bring it back and then it's sent back again and we tweak it. So, you know, I'm to the point where, you know, after we um, have these questions answered, um, let's vote it up or down. Thank you. Councilman Freeman. Just real quick. Yep, I'll try to be real brief. Four things that I heard. One of them was that it's at odds with pending legislation in Lansing. If we tried to hold up every piece of uh, legislation here at, at the city until Lansing acted, we wouldn't do anything, even less than what we do now. Um, so I'm, I'm not in favor of waiting for um, Lansing to take action because just because it's in a pending bill now doesn't mean it's going to be there when it's passed. Um, I heard somebody say something about HIPAA laws. My understanding is, is that a HIPAA, law, a HIPAA is a federal um, act that would cover, that, that deals with covered entities, and I don't believe at the federal level that um, marijuana dispensaries or provisioning centers are covered under HIPAA. Um, somebody, or I think the first speaker, an attorney, uh, mentioned um, licensing. He doesn't know of any business that's licensed, that requires its employees to be licensed. And I guess if the big push is, is this, this is um, a medical issue that um, we could go over to Hurley and ask a nurse if they're licensed or ask a, uh, therapists if they're licensed or a nursing assistant if they're licensed or a doctor if they're licensed I think they're all licensed and if we're going to approach this from a medical standpoint then um, caregivers should probably be licensed and then they also I heard somebody talk about um, we don't regulate alcohol the same way that alcohol kills more people um, than medical marijuana does and I, I would disagree with that I think we um, do have regulation on um, alcohol serving establishments we have it on the number of um, establishments, the locations, the hours, the days of sale. So we do regulate that, and I don't see where um, we shouldn't regulate um, these um, businesses as well. So that's my Thank you. short bridge. Councilman Davis. Well, uh, Councilman Friedman kind of said some things that I probably was going to allude to 
So I move my over to Councilman Neely. Councilman Neely, thank you. Thank you, Councilman Davis. Councilman Neely. Yes, just to provide a little bit of history on this, because this particular um, action has been in place or been moving for about three and a half years, and that's uh, we've been moving this uh, prior to the emergency manager even taking uh, over the city of Flint. The more 